Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X for DX Engineering. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at etiquette when operating the FM satellites. FM satellite operating is experiencing a huge surge in activity, and for good reason. It's a fun and exciting part of the hobby that even technician class licensees can enjoy, and the amount of gear to get started is minimal, so lots of new folks are trying the FM birds for the first time. We love seeing new activity on the satellites. Satellite operating comes with several challenges, however, not the least of which is that it's one of the ultimate shared resources in the entire hobby. While there are several FM satellites you can choose from these days, a satellite is only gonna be above your horizon for a maximum of 15 minutes or so per pass. There's a natural sense of urgency that develops if a pass is close to ending and you still haven't gotten through to the station that you want to contact. But there are a few simple points of etiquette that can make satellite passes more enjoyable and less frustrating for everybody. Some are common courtesy, some are more technical in nature, and some are satellite protocols that have developed over the years that new satellite operators simply don't know yet because they're new. These tips will help make your satellite time more enjoyable and help you be a good team player on satellite passes. Let's take a look at some of these tips. For most of us, our ham radio mentors have hammered into our heads this simple tip. Listen, listen, listen. For FM satellite operating, this definitely applies, but there's a very important corollary. Don't transmit if you can't hear the satellite first. There are numerous passes where you can hear a whistler or somebody saying something along the lines of hello radio, check one, two, that kind of stuff. Hello, hello, check. <whistles> check one, two. <whistles> and it becomes very clear quickly that they are simply trying to hear themselves through the satellite. That's understandable. You want to make sure that you can hear yourself so you can talk to other people through the satellite. The problem is that when they do that, they could actually be making it into the satellite, disrupting other users of the pass when they're transmitting. If you don't hear other people on the satellite, you're not going to hear yourself either. Blindly calling or whistling may cause unintentional interference to other stations that can properly hear the satellite. The second important piece of etiquette is to simply be sure to wait your turn. Just as you wouldn't interrupt a conversation in person or step on a QSO in progress on HF, it's bad form to call a station while they're trying to complete a contact on satellite or attempt to initiate a new contact before another QSO is finished. November 5, Bravo Oscar. Here's November 9, November Charlie Yankee. Echo Nancy 5 zero. November 9, November Charlie Yankee from Kilo X Ray 9 X Ray. Given the rapid nature of satellite contacts, you shouldn't have to wait very long for your chance during a satellite pass. Tip number three is to simply be sure that you use phonetics at all times during a satellite pass. It's easy in the heat of the moment to simply say your call as fast as you possibly can when you're trying to make a contact. However, even on FM satellites, certain letters sound the same. B, C, D, G, P, T, V, and Z all sound very similar. It's good practice to use standard international phonetics when giving your call over the air on satellite. Phonetics help ensure your call is copied correctly the first time and can save a lot of precious moments during a satellite pass. Tip number four, try to minimize repeat QSOs. It's Totally understandable you want to say hello to a friend that you hear during a satellite pass. But try to keep in mind that because of the scarcity of time available during a satellite pass, each contact you make with a person you've already had several contacts with could prevent another person from making a contact. That person may be brand new to satellite operating, or maybe they're trying to work a rare station. If a pass is particularly busy, stop for a minute and think whether you really need to make another contact with a station you've already worked several times. The last tip is try to allow the rare stations on the satellite pass a little bit more time. Many satellite ops are chasing various operating awards, such as the ARRL's VUCC award for working over 100 different grid squares. Or maybe they're working on work all states or even DXCC. 
As on HF, satellite operators go to significant trouble and expense to transmit from some pretty rare locations. In other cases, genuine DX stations can be heard in the United States on satellite, especially from the Caribbean and Central and South America. It is true that you have the right to be on any satellite pass that you can access, and you can try to work stations at a pace and in a manner that you choose. It's also true that satellites are available to all, regardless of where you are or how rare your operating location is or whether or not you're interested in collecting grid squares. However, try to have some consideration for a station that's operating portable or in a rare location that day. They may only be at that location for the day or maybe even only for that single satellite pass. If you have the opportunity to work different passes that a rare station isn't on, consider doing that. It would be a big plus to the portable station or the station that's only on for a specific pass. How do you know if there's going to be a rare station on during that pass? Well, the first thing you can do is you can check the AMSAT upcoming satellite operations page for the latest news. In addition, many active grid rovers use Twitter to post real-time updates on their operation schedules. You can search for AMSAT to find posts from active satellite operators, and you can follow AMSAT and also a feed called The Grid Life as well. Of course, listening before transmitting during a pass is still the best way to tell who's on. Satellite activity is at an all-time high, with new sats being launched on a regular basis and more operators discovering how much fun there is to be had on the satellites. By being mindful of others trying to make contacts and thinking of others that are on the same pass as you, we can all contribute to a better satellite environment for everyone. Thanks for watching. 73.